Oh, no, no, no. We got a test right here. Notice the high, 6 bucks. So technically, you started to see some buying interest here even at 10, 11 in the morning. Now, it really broke over here the first time. So the first true break of it, it was a quote-unquote false breakout, wasn't it? So this is exactly where I tell you, my most confident strat, my most confident entry on a trade is a rebreak, because a rebreak shows prior buying interest or prior selling interest. Otherwise, for a short. So here we had interest on the test, we had interest on the first break, and then on the rebreak, pop and run, held support, made the better move up at that point. Right now, 650 was your bigger resistance. What happened there? Well, the same to be said. It actually made a little move off 650, but this is where we have to ask for as much as a stock already popped and ran up from the morning, you know, 935, 945 here bottomed out. At 1030, it was kind of flat and then broke higher. So it was still running when it could have already been reversing. So for as much as it was already running up off of 650, granted, it could keep going. But you ask yourself, what happens if it doesn't? What happens if this fails to make the bigger move up to the next resistance? What happens if it comes back down under the level again? Easy to say, but it held under resistance. It dropped back down a small amount back to the next level here, seemingly. Uh, you know, Ryan, really quickly, I don't know if an iceberg order was here at the time. I can go into book map if I'd like, but you know, just you could see this is a pretty strong top right at 620 ish. Hey, even if there was not an iceberg here, this certainly showed how clean of a resistance it was. You'd like to think that resistance should eventually become support. So ended up making a beautiful move, but then again, just hey, it failed here at first. So I know it was pretty nasty here initially. One may think it's going to continue to be nasty again. But the way that we have to think about it as traders is not what happens if it makes another false breakout. I mean, that's pessimistic personality. You know, if you're that afraid, then you're not going to be able to become consistently profitable, at least to the level that you want to become consistently profitable. If you end up walking away with like 20 bucks here, 30, that's all right. But you, you and I both know that you're here for a different reason. You're here to make your days pay, to you know change your life, supplement your income, perhaps help out family. All right, the little profits aren't going to do it. You want to feel confident with your entry is where I'm saying. So, hey, you know what? Don't focus on the false breakouts and how scary this was. Focus on the potential buying interest that this had for every time it nipped above 650. For every time it tested that big iceberg, you know, we saw prospective buying. So over time, what happens if we see more? And it ended up leading to a pretty good move, right? So that may have answered a bunch of questions that I didn't read yet through email, just that whole analysis there. But that is basically the embodiment of any trade that we look to take. You know, it's not going to be perfect right away. And the fact that it makes a false breakout well, hey, unless if it's a total dump off after, you know, if the stock can move back up to that level over time and provide another opportunity, you want to take that trade. It's as simple as that. But again, just to kind of um, summarize for Ryan, at least there, let's put a much bigger focus on where the iceberg levels are first, the CVP column on book map there, if you got um, chart levels are kind of like tertiary to me. You know, we follow the big money, right? Hey, that's our whole MO here. So if you are looking to follow the big money, then you probably should put a focus on level three, level four first. But then again, if there is a really, really strong chart level and we see it, it's as bright as day, then you do want to, you know, show that respect again here. Like, Hey, basic charting principle resistance did become support. Was that because of an iceberg though? I think it was. There was an iceberg at 622 here at some point throughout the morning for about like 70, 75,000 shares. They ended up moving their order down to 619, 619, and it broke over that. 
Become a Cyber Group member today. Just click the link below and receive all these amazing products and a world of knowledge for just $9. Do it today.